Let's move on then to the financial space. Mutut Finance is a stock in focus. The stock, in fact, has surged over 30%. If we look at just the last year, that makes it one of the best performing counters, especially from the NBFC space ever since that NBFC crisis hit in about September, October of last year. The counter has jumped about 65% if we talk about the, those October lows as well uh, of last year. Let's bring in the managing director of the company then, George Alexander Mutut. Joining in really give us an outlook for the company, what's factoring into the positive moves, at least that the market is perceiving at this point in time. Welcome to the show. Uh, Mr. Muthut, and uh, let me just start by uh, getting a, an assessment from you about where we stand at the moment. The kind of factors that shielded your company, uh, you know, where it didn't other NBFCs, uh, from the kind of NBFC crisis that we saw in the last few months of last year. Uh, what really uh, are, would you say, are the strengths that you had, and where do you find yourself at this point in time? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, as far as the gold, gold, gold loan companies are concerned, uh, there is actually no uh, no issue with regard to uh, asset liability mismatch because all our loans are very short term and uh, uh, the total average loan period is only about four to five months. In fact, 10% uh, of our loans come back the same month and in six months time, 50 to 60% of our loans come back. So we never had any issue with regard to uh, asset liability mismatch. In fact, we, had, we were able to demonstrate that even in the uh, crisis period of October, November, uh, we actually uh, slowed down our advances. So we, would, we could collect about more than 1,000 crores which we kept in liquid funds. It was only to demonstrate to the market that we can recover our own funding, our own loans uh, at a very short notice if there is a crisis. Of course, our CPs are all repaid and uh, today, the number of the amount of CPs we had about 3,000 in uh, last qu uh, last quarter has now gone up to 4,000. That means that shows the confidence of the CP market or the market players in uh, gold loan finance companies and Mutu. I think that has really helped us. Uh, but of course, uh, as usual, the rates have gone up by about uh, uh, 25 to 100 basis points. I think we have also uh, uh, factored that in our loan yields also. So, Net, net, uh, our interest, net interest margins are remaining the same even after this crisis period. All right, so net interest margin remains the same in spite of the kind of uptick that we've seen uh, for rates overall. Uh, uh, you mentioned that your CPs have actually grown uh, in, the, in the time period since, so that's definitely something that does point towards some confidence. Uh, how is the liquidity scenario looking like for you at the moment? Would you say things are neutral or are things still tight? Actually, liquidity is not an issue for us. We have, we have gone in for uh, an MCD issue also, which we have not been doing aggressively in the last one year. Uh, but now we have gone for an MCD issue, just about 750 crores of MCD issue, uh, which got fully subscribed uh, last month. And now our subsidiary, Home Finance and MCD issue, uh, is also on. I think it should, it should also get fully subscribed. It's about, uh, including the green shoes, about 300 crores. I think in the next uh, week or so, it should get fully subscribed. So it's all fully retail only. We are looking at retail uh, in series uh, because we it has a good retail franchisee of investors for the last several decades. All right, let's talk about gold prices. Uh, you know, we'd actually seen a very strong recovery from those lows that we had uh, witnessed uh, back in uh, September of last year. But the last month or so does seem to have shown quite a bit of pressure. We're down about 6% at the moment from the highs that we'd hit in February. So that upward move does seem to have paused at the moment. How would this impact the gold financing business? The, uh, gold financing, uh, in, if you look at a little more longer period, maybe three years, four years, etc., the gold price is almost stable, right? maximum about 5%, 10% uh, fluctuation is there. That is actually uh, there in the market. Otherwise, the gold price, you can say, is relatively stable. Even the recent one, uh, maybe 5% going up one month, 5% coming down next month, it stabilizes. And, and I'm sure it will stabilize uh, at this level. And because we keep a good margin on our funding, on our uh, uh, loan to value, so that's never an issue for us. And uh, moreover, as you know, we don't finance gold or uh, we finance only gold ornaments, that is household ornaments. So uh, we have never seen any uh, issues with the gold price. And the gold price, to me, even in the future, in the future also, it will be stable only. I don't think it is going to come down. 
All right, point taken. Uh, so you haven't uh, seen as much of uh, you know the kind of volatility that's played out in gold prices, especially over a longer term. Things have remained fairly stable. You mentioned the kind of moves that we've seen as far as uh, you know the uh, the rate movement is concerned. Uh, specifically for your company, how have the cost of funds panned out for you in the fourth quarter? And what really is the expectation that you have going forward from here? Can at what rate are you borrowing? What is the kind of rate that you are factoring in then for the current uh, fiscal as well? Yeah, last year our average cost of funding should have been about 8.8 percent, 8.25%. Now it is almost up by 75 to 100 basis points. So today we are looking at 9.25, uh, 9.5, etc. as the rate because all the banks have increased their rates. As I said earlier, we have increased our yields also because uh, when banks increase their uh, borrowing cost to us, we pass it on to our customers. So I think in the next six months, only after the next six months. Uh, the rates may start coming down for next quarter, this quarter and the next quarter, the rates may be, I think, uh, on the, in the same range only. It will not come down. And I'm sure it is not going to go up also. All right. So we, we've already seen a near 100 basis point uptick compared to last year, factoring in about a nine and a quarter or nine and a half percent uh, cost of fund as far as uh, the current fiscal year is concerned. Uh, you give us, uh, you know, a sense of what's going on as far as uh, the NCDs go. What is the update on fundraising plans, and also uh, how exactly are you planning to utilize these funds going forward? Because uh, we have uh, such a lot of bank borrowings, we have about uh, 13,000, 14,000 crores of bank borrowings. We can always use it towards working capital and our growth also. Uh, growth has also been good in the last one year, and I'm sure next year also growth should be reasonably. We have uh, factored a 15% plus growth uh, of uh, AUM last year, and uh, next year also we are thinking of, or the coming year also we are thinking of a 15% plus growth in AUM. That should be funded uh, along, uh, other than the internal accruals, uh, we can also be looking at uh, uh, new funding sources like uh, NCDs and uh, banks also, bank lines also. So we have never faced any issue with uh, funding uh, till now and I'm sure going forward also banks or CPs or NCDs would never uh, be an issue for Muthut as far as uh, the liability side is concerned. All right, roughly, uh, what is the breakup as far as your borrowing profile is concerned? If you could just share that with us, and how has it changed over the last three to four months? Uh, last three to four months, it has not uh, really changed because, as I said, the CPs, which were about uh, 3,000 crores, have gone to 4,000 crores, which should be uh, less than 10% uh, of our total borrowings. Uh, bank borrowing should be in the region of about uh, 13,000, 14,000 crores, and the uh, NCDs, the uh, publicly listed in series, the uh, retail in series, etc., should be about uh, 8,000 crores. And uh, there is a net worth also of almost about 9,000 crores. All right. So your capacity right. is always about uh, 25%. All right, let's talk about your subsidiary as well. Uh, you know, since we have you, Mr. Mathut, uh, as far as the home finance business is concerned, how are things looking on the ground, especially if we talk about demand? Uh, yeah, uh, we were thinking of uh, growing our uh, in, uh, home loan books to about 2,500 crores, uh, just uh, the quarter which we just had. Uh, but I don't think we would have reached that because the last two quarters were not good for, not healthy for uh, in, in, uh, housing finance companies, especially the affordable housing, because of the issues in the actually in the real estate sector. So we actually slowed down our disbursals in the last two quarters. And uh, we were, we, I don't think we would have reached the 2,500 crores of uh, lending in the home finance sector. But our microfinance has done well. Uh, it is uh, doing uh, much better than what we have expected. It had also gone in for a uh, uh, PE investor. PE investors also come in, so funding actually is uh, very, very well uh, funded today because the PE investors also brought in money and we have also brought in identical money. Uh, so, as far as the microfinance is concerned, it is uh, doing extremely well. The home finance, as I said, we have uh, slowed down our dispersal mainly because of the uh, issues in the uh, real estate sector because uh, our people also say it is not that easy to come across uh, good uh, uh, real estate companies uh, giving uh, homes to or homes to the, uh, to the borrowers, home buyers. So the good quality homes are not uh, really there uh, as we had 
maybe about uh, six, seven months back. So probably in the next five, six months, real estate sector also should see some uh, some consolidation, some good companies also coming forward, and then we will uh, grow the housing finance. We also started a, a third subsidiary, which is the vehicle finance subsidiary, Muthut Money. It has also done well. Just uh, in the first nine months, we have already reached about uh, 350 crores of AUM. It is now uh, doing business only in the states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, mainly in the uh, uh, four-wheeler uh, cars, used cars, uh, new cars, and also the commercial vehicles. It's also doing extremely well. Uh, the performance has been extremely good, and next year also we should see that doing better. We also uh, started the uh, personal loan business, uh, although in a very small way last one year. Now we have got a good team of people also in the personal, <coughs> personal loan, which is personal salaried customers, salaried customers, maybe 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 5 lakhs uh, range. Uh, that is also doing well. It is about uh, 200 crores of AUM as of date. So we are diversifying our uh, 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 assets, uh, assets other than the gold loan, which we wanted to reach a 15%, probably uh, from 10%. So 15% of the total AU, probably we may not have reached that, mainly because of the housing finance uh, slowdown. Probably next year we should be able to reach the 15% plus other than whole loan AU1. All right, point taken. So home finance business perhaps will not be meeting the kind of target that you had laid out for the year. Things are looking challenging for that industry, uh, but you have achieved about 350 crore AUM for the vehicle finance business. Definitely keeping an eye on the subsidiaries as far as Muthut Finance is concerned. Thanks very much. Always appreciate you joining and that's the view coming in from George Alexander Muthut of Muthut Finance. Well, let's put the focus then on some earnings reactions. Sterlite Technologies is in focus, delivered a stellar fourth quarter this time around. Profits saw a whopping jump about 47%, but where we saw the pressure was very clearly the margins.